Drama Smith here with a very special tutorial. We are making the Hogwarts Express. This is a GWR 460 engine. This is the Alton Hall number 5972 as used in the Harry Potter films. It has an LNER corridor tender attached. I'll tell you why later. In the meantime, let's get building. And to build the Hogwarts Express, you need the following. Yep, that's a lot. <laughs> Okay, let's list it off. Three red concrete, 39 grey or brown terracotta, four pistons, eight levers, 18 nether bricks, 60 nether brick stairs, 26 iron trap doors, 16 hoppers, 13 blackstone wall, 16 blackstone, nine blackstone stairs, 32 blackstone slabs, 13 polished blackstone bricks, 16 polished blackstone brick stairs, six polished blackstone, 13 polished blackstone slabs, four polished blackstone pressure plates, four red nether brick wall, 256 red nether bricks, 53 red nether brick stairs, 74 red nether brick slabs, six acacia buttons, four polished blackstone buttons, around 60 blocks of coal, maybe a couple more or a couple less, three grindstones, three dark oak signs, 14 dark oak slabs, one dark oak door, one birch door, three spruce trap doors, seven dark oak trap doors, one item frame, one blast furnace, one compass, two end rods, one bell, 41 pieces of black carpet, 32 pieces of red carpet, two lanterns, three yellow dye, and optional, four red banners with a yellow fess and then a red fess laid over the top, and two red banners with a white rondelle. And of course, waste blocks of your choice. I find dirt's good enough. Begin with laying down your track. I like to use anvils and oak slabs. I got the idea for the anvil track from Crafty Fox. Pick a starting point, lay down your waste block and on top of it place one, two, three red concrete and get rid of your waste block. Now we're going to make buffers for the front of the train. I got these from Crafty Fox. There's a link in the description to his channel. So we place a piston on its side and another piston on its side, either end of the red bar that we've made. Levers, flip them down. Buffers. In between the levers, a black stone wall for a coupling and on top of each piston, a lantern. Now come round behind the back and from the middle of this red concrete bar, we're going to place 22 grey terracotta. 1, 2, 3, 21, 22. Coming back to the front, we're going to start on our wheels. So leave a one block gap and with nether brick stairs, place one right way up on the second block from the front and underneath it, another stair upside down come in front of them and place one, two. So you end up with this cross shape. That's our first wheel. Just pretend it's round. Now we're going to leave a gap of three, one, two, three, and we're going to place a right way up near the brick stair and an upside down one. And round the back, we're going to repeat that mirrored. Now we're going to do our large wheels, leave a gap of one and place a nether brick on the next one and under that an upside down nether brick stair next to that a nether brick and an upside down nether brick stair and on top of that a nether brick put a piece of wall in between leave a one block gap and repeat this on the next set now leave a two block gap one two and do the same thing again. That's all our wheels for this side. Now go around the other side and repeat all of this. That's our wheels finished. Let's get on with the rest of the undercarriage. I'll do one side and then we'll repeat it on the other. So come to the front and behind one of the pistons, an upside down red nether brick stair. In between the first two sets of wheels, one, two, three, 
Blackstone and one, two, three Blackstone stairs. Between the next wheels, a top half dark oak slab. Same between the next and two between the next two. At the end of the last wheel, a blackstone wall and then one, two polished blackstone and underneath those two polished blackstone slabs and on this last one, a bottom half blackstone slab. Now come back to this piece of wall and on the terracotta underneath, in line with this wall, place a blackstone slab. Connecting rods next. On this second wheel, so one, two, two iron trap doors at the bottom of the top stairs. On this next wheel, an iron trap door at the top of the bottom stairs, and then iron trap doors in line with this one, all the way along to the first blocks on the last wheel. So it should look like that. That's your connecting rods. One last block to place behind this red nether brick stair, a polished blackstone slab. Repeat all this on the other side. With all that done, come to the end and between the two polished blackstone blocks, place one, two grindstones for couplings. You'll have to shift click to place the second one. Back at the front, with black carpet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pieces of black carpet. And now we're ready to start on the boiler. So come to this row of blackstone that's just behind the carpet. One, two, three blackstone, same on the other side, and one polished blackstone brick between. Now you can fill in between with blackstone or if you don't want to waste it, use dirt. No one is going to see what's inside. Now again, with this next one, you can make this polished blackstone brick or you can make it dirt. It's entirely up to you. But whatever you place there, you place a polished blackstone brick in front. On top of that, polished blackstone and on all three sides of that polished blackstone brick. And now in these spaces, polished blackstone brick stair. That's the front of our boiler. On the polished blackstone, a lever and flip it down. Now for the rest of the front part of the boiler, come round the back and one, two, three, one, two, three, and one polished blackstone brick. And fill in these gaps with polished blackstone brick stair. Now you can just fill in the rest of this like this, but if you want a fire so you've got smoke coming out of the smokestack, leave a one block gap and then place polished blackstone brick at the last one. Place a block here, can be whatever you want, no one's going to see it. And on top of that block, place a campfire. Now polished blackstone on top. All of this is spawnable. To spawn proof it, polished blackstone pressure plates. Now you have to use a pressure plate rather than carpet because carpet severely reduces the amount of smoke that will come out your stack. Pressure plate's definitely the way to go. Okay, a bit of decoration. So polished blackstone buttons on the first and last of each of the blocks on the side and then blackstone wall, second from the end, and one underneath. Now fill in the inside with whatever block you want, or spawn proof it, or put a light in, but make sure that you have a blackstone block at the bottom there. Now for the rest of the boiler, with red nether brick. Pick one of these three points, doesn't matter which, go back 11, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Do the same here. And do the same on this bottom one. 
And now underneath here, come back one, two, three, four. Now fill in all these gaps with red nether brick stair, including underneath all the way to the end. And again, fill the inside or spawn proof it somehow. Now directly behind these black stone blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six black stone slabs, and then one, two, and three black stone stairs. And behind those stairs in the middle, you want seven nether brick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That should bring us one short of the end of the boiler. Now on the top, come to the far end, leave a gap of one, two, and then place your bell so that it's arcing like this. That's the best I can do for a dome. And run red carpet along the top to spawn proof. I wish we had red nether brick pressure plates. We don't. Now grab your acacia buttons. On the boiler, in line with the black stone wall in this first large wheel, put an acacia button on the nether brick on the side. Now we're going to do some prep for the wheel arches. So put a black stone block above each black stone wall of your first two large wheels, bottom half black stone slab between and one either side and then a right way up red nether brick stair at the end. Do that over the other side. Firebox next. Next to this red nether brick stair we're going to place one, two, three, four red nether brick blocks. Build that up to a height of four and top it off with four bottom half red nether brick slabs. Same on the other side and fill the gap between with bottom half red nether brick slabs. And now fill this in or light it or spawn proof it, whatever it is that you're doing. And if you are filling it, leave this last column empty. Now we're going to grab our buttons again and on the same row as this button, but on the first column of the firebox, we're going to place an acacia button, leave a gap, place another, do the same round the other side. And now we're ready for the wheel arches. So come to the front of the train and behind this carpet we're going to place seven bottom half red nether brick slabs and the seventh should be in line with this black stone stair. Now three red nether brick blocks which are in line with that large wheel, red nether brick slab bottom half on top, one more next to it and then another three in line with the next wheel with the red nether brick slab bottom half in the middle. Two more slabs and three more blocks with a slab on top. That's the wheel arches. Now these blocks here are actually spawnable. If you don't want mobs hitching a lift, spawn proof them with red carpet. Not the best solution but the best one I can come up with. Repeat that on the other side. Now for the cab. Next to this block, one, two, three red nether brick blocks. Build it up to a height of three. Red nether brick wall either end and an end rod in between. You could use iron bars. I like the end rod for light. Do that on the other side. Now we're going to build the cab roof directly on top of the end rods and walls. We're going to place bottom half black stone slabs waste block next to it and a top half black stone slab, get rid of the waste block, fill in the nine squares of the roof. Now the top of the roof is spawnable, you can spawn proof it with black carpet which is what I've chosen to do or you could use polished black stone pressure plates, it's up to you. Inside of the cab, red nether bricks, in this top part of the gap, leave a gap of one, put another one, fill this one with whatever you want, then one, two, three red nether brick and three more there. Fill this middle bit with whatever you want. Make sure there is a red nether brick block at the end. Now in that gap, a 
blast furnace, above it an item frame and a compass inside it for a pressure gauge, a lever on the left and two on the right and flick one of them down. Now the floor, you could use red nether brick slabs, that's what I've allowed for in the supply list, or you could go for polished blackstone slabs. Now next to those, three top half polished blackstone slabs directly above the coupling. And now to finish off the engine, come to a side of the cab and in this middle block, a dark oak sign, go down one row and type 5972. If you're in Java, you can use yellow dye on that to colour it. Do the same on the other side and at the front, directly above this lever, place a third. That's our engine done. It's not going anywhere without coal, so the next thing we need to build is a tender. So come back to your track, and on the track directly after the coupling, place a waste block. On top of that, place your grey terracotta, get rid of the waste block, and then two, three. So you end up with a bar. Now behind that bar we're going to go out 11 grey terracotta. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And at the end, 1, 2, 3. Now this end we're going to make buffers like we did at the front. So a piston either end at its side, levers and flick them down to open them. And then in between we're going to put a grindstone for a coupling. Now at this end we're going to put a bottom half polished blackstone slab. That's a step up for the cabin crew. Now wheels, red nether brick stairs. Face towards the front of the tender, leave a gap of one and place a right way up nether brick stair, an upside down one underneath it, come around the other side and two more nether brick stairs. There's our wheel. Leave a gap of one and make a second wheel, another gap of one and make a third, and another gap of one should mean that the fourth goes right up against our buffer. Now place a dark oak slab top half between each of the wheels and hoppers with the funnels going into the top stairs again on each of the wheels. Repeat all this on the other side. That's the undercarriage done. Now come to the front and above this polished blackstone slab place one, two, three red nether brick blocks and a red nether brick stair on top so it looks like that. Now run red nether brick all the way along to the end, including over the piston and build that up to a height of four. Repeat this wall on the other side. And now you can spawn proof the top either with bottom half red nether brick slabs or with carpet if you want a cheaper option. Come down to the end. You want red nether brick all the way along and then up to a height of four on these two and one more there so that you've got a gap for a door here. And again, spawn proof the top either with slabs or with carpet. Come round to the front. Now you have a choice. You can put three red nether brick here or if you prefer, polished blackstone. Now at this, would you stop that? Now at this point you have to decide what the floor of your corridor is going to be. The supply list is allowed for red nether brick, but you could just as easily make it polished blackstone. Whatever you choose, do the same along the other side. Now fill in this gap with whatever you like, it could be dirt, it could be coal, it could be red nether brick, it could be polished blackstone, it doesn't matter, no one's going to see it. 
Now coming back to the front, on the platform side, leave a gap of one block and place a red nether brick, place another one on top and one next to it so you end up with this shape. Now on top of that, red nether brick stairs and one next to it. And now place a dark oak door so that the hinge is on the non-platform side and it opens inward. Now again you've got a choice, block of coal there or if you want something that looks like loose coal, you could put blackstone. And now we build up the walls of the corridor in the tender. You can do this with red nether brick, with polished blackstone, with whatever you want. I have allowed in the supplies for you to build it up with coal. Build the wall up to a height of two. And now we're going to make the roof of the corridor with polished blackstone slabs bottom half. So take it all the way along and fill in your tender with coal. Now why have I got an LNER corridor tender? Because in book one of Harry Potter, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Hermione Granger says she has been up to speak to the driver. At that point she can't apparate. The only way she could do it is by walking and the only company that had corridor tenders was LNER. Right, there's our coal in. Now you can spawn proof it by either putting down some blackstone slabs to look like loose coal or you can use carpet or you can use a mix. All right, come around to the back of your carriage and place a birch trap door with the hinges on the non-platform side. Place three spruce trap doors along the bottom and surround the rest of the door with dark oak trap doors. Fold them up and down. This will make a Pullman connection. Now alternately you can get rid of the middle spruce trap door and replace it with a spruce slab. Don't forget to spawn proof the corridor of your corridor tender. You could use red carpet, grey carpet, black carpet. You could drop the floor by a half slab. I have allowed for red carpet in the supply list. We're almost finished. Come to the middle of your tender, that's directly above this gap between the sets of wheels. Come up one, two, three, and on the third, place the banner with the rondelle, place the fest banners either side. Repeat that over the other side. And there we have it. One Hogwarts Express with corridor tender. Now I am aware this tutorial is long. But bear with me, I'm going to have a very quick word about what carriages to add to your engine. What carriages you add to your Hogwarts Express train depends on whether you're making a train from the films or the books. Now I have designed these engines and the carriages to be scaled to a normal Minecraft player so you can get in any of these trains and walk right the length and not feel dwarfed or cramped. There are tutorials for all these carriages, there's a link in the description below to each of them and a link at the end of this video to a full playlist. So for films one to five, you'll need to attach to your engine three corridor compartment carriages and one composite corridor compartment brake van. If you're more interested in the train from film number six, two corridor compartment carriages, one vestibule carriage, another corridor compartment carriage and a combined corridor compartment brake van. That's the films. For the books, it's not specified in the books how many carriages there are, it just says there's multiple. We know that Harry and Hermione and Ron preferred the end carriages in the early books. So I had to do a little bit of homework. Now all students have to go to Hogwarts by Hogwarts Express which makes me wonder what happens to the kids who live in Hogsmeade. That's a long trip. There are a thousand students in a year at Hogwarts. To fit them all in, you would need 17 corridor compartment carriages. They don't even render all in. And right at the end, I have a luggage brake van, although you could easily substitute a composite corridor compartment brake van. That's for worst case scenario, no magic. Of course, we have magic involved. You could in theory have one carriage, although we know from the books there are multiple. This train 
is a compromised train between magic with hardly any carriages, which I think sort of explains these, and what you'd need in real life. So this has got 12 carriages, which is what the Flying Scotsman would pull. I've chosen the Flying Scotsman because King's Cross was an LNER station and the Flying Scotsman was the LNER train. I think this is a GWR engine because that was what was available for filming that the producer at the time liked the look of. So this train has got 11 corridor compartment carriages and right at the end, a combined luggage brake van, which you could easily substitute for a combined corridor compartment brake van. These have a slightly different palette to my tutorial series. It is exactly the same builds except instead of using Pullman colours, I've got a little tiny texture pack where I have changed an acacia trap door to the solid scarlet and I've got smooth stone for the roof instead of smooth sandstone. If you'd like the little add-on texture pack, let me know in the comments and I'll work out how you could pick that up. But there we are. Hogwarts Express, complete with carriages. I'd love to know what you do with this. I do have a Discord. I'll set up a channel where you could post your pictures of your Hogwarts Express. There should be an end card on the screen now linking you to the full playlist series for all my carriages and my engines. Bye!